and thank you everybody for joining us today. My name is Macy. I'm one of the campus recruiters here at Ide Bailey based out of our Minneapolis, Minnesota office. We are super excited to have you all join us today to hear a little bit about our culture and hear from our staff. We've got staff from all across the firm that are going to be sharing their experiences. They're all from different departments, different levels, so you should hear a, lot, a wide variety of stories. But we have a pretty jam-packed session today, so I'm not going to take up too much time chatting, but I wanted to run through the agenda for you. So we're going to start off with a little bit of a welcome and message from our CEO, Dave Stendi. And then our Chief Human Resources Officer is going to lead a session um, along with some of our staff about our culture and benefits. Then you'll hear a little bit from our Diversity and Inclusion Committee um, and some of the things that they're working on, initiatives that they have coming. And then we are going to wrap things up with a panel of professionals. Like Amy said, um, if you have any questions that you would like answered by the panel, feel free to use the Q&A function or the chat function. Um, and we can get those answered for you. Um, Amy, if you want to go ahead and kick off with our first poll. Sure. So let me share my screen here. So we want to do a poll and see where everyone is joining us from. So you can either text I'd to, or excuse me, uh, we're not going to do a text. My apologies. We are going to open up a separate internet browser. So on your screen, or on your laptop, go ahead and open up an internet browser. You can also do this on your cell phone. And you're going to go to pollev.com slash ID2 and let us know where you're joining us from. You should be able to place a little pin in the state or continent you might be in. All right, we are going to go ahead and get started. So I am going to hand things off to our CEO, Dave Stendi, to say a couple of words. Okay, you gave me a little more time than a couple words, Macy, I hope. Uh, good afternoon or good morning to everyone, depending upon where you're at. You know, I Bailey is a dynamic, growing, innovative firm, and I believe it's a firm that you can grow and learn uh, within our organization. Uh, we're excited. As a group, we're all excited to talk to you today, and thank you for taking the time to uh, join us. We appreciate it. You know, I started my career... 39 years ago, um, I've been the CEO of the firm for the last eight years. I started as an auditor. I had no intention of spending my whole career here. I just wanted to get some experience, but you know, I enjoyed it. I loved what I did and uh, never wanted to leave. When I started, the firm had about 100 people in four offices. You know, today we're at, we have 2,500 people. Uh, 40 offices and we're located in 14 states. And so certainly in my career, I've seen a lot of changes, uh, not just from the growth perspective, but from the depth of expertise we have in our in various industries and our consulting services and the wide variety of services that we offer as a firm. And obviously the technology and innovation aspect uh, is state of the art. You know, I, I like to joke, when I, when I started my career, we really had two pieces of technology, a 10-key calculator and a mechanical pencil. And, and my, how times have changed, and it's changed for the better. But, you know, that said, the one thing that hasn't changed is the culture of the firm. And when I started the office that I was in, we had about a dozen people. And, you know, from day one, it was, uh, it, this family atmosphere, uh, down to earth people. It was collaboration. We're really working as a team, even though I'm the new guy and there's a couple partners in the office. It was a feeling of family and team. And that, that's the culture that remains. When I look back at my career, I've had early on, I'd say there's a couple partners who truly mentored me. You know, and, and they took it upon themselves to help me be successful in my career. They gave me opportunities and challenges, and they really made the effort to make it happen for me. And you're still going to find that today. That, that's part of our culture. It's, 
valuing everyone's contributions. It's really trusting and supporting one another, working together as a team. That defines who I Bailey is. And it's a place from the very start, you're gonna develop lifelong friendships. Um, years ago, a partner asked me, so Dave, if you were starting a firm from scratch, what would you rather have? A lot of good people and no clients or a lot of good clients and no people? Of course, I kind of blew it off, rhetorical question, you know, but I've thought about it many times over the years. And what that question is really all about is what's the culture of the firm? What's more important? Now, obviously you need both people and you need clients, but what's the most important part? And here at I Bailey, the most important part is our people. I'd rather start with a firm of good people. We can always get clients, not the reverse. Let's put our people first. And why that's important is as we've grown over the years, we've expanded our footprint and our focus is on the Western half of the United States. As I mentioned, we're in 14 states. And when we look for firms to merge into I Bailey, that's the first criteria is where do people rank? People have to be the most important aspect. That's how we create a common culture throughout the firm, even though we've continued to grow over the years. So, um, you know, when we talk about the clients we have, and I think that's really part of the core culture that we have as a firm too, you know, our, our goals is to serve, and what we do do is serve small to medium-sized businesses. That's been our focus. You know, we've doubled in size every five to seven years for the last many years. And even though we're getting bigger, it's not, we're not changing the clients we serve. That focus on the small to mid-market clients, and mid-market can be large clients, but we're not focused so much on SEC clients. And why that's important and why that's part of our culture is working with those clients allows you the opportunity to, to understand their entire business. You're with a team, you're working on, on the client, but you see and understand the whole business. You also have the opportunity to work with real entrepreneurs and learn how it is they, that they develop a business. And your business acumen is um, greatly enhanced. You know, when I think about it, I talked about those two partners who were my, ment my mentors, but over your career, you're gonna have a number of mentors. And I can point to a few clients that they didn't know it, but they were actually mentors. I learned a lot from them as to how to manage people and how to uh, operate and grow a business. So that's an important aspect too. And the other thing that we strive as a firm that also is part of our culture is when you join us with an entry level position, we want you to have as much experience as, as possible with a variety of industries. Work in a bunch of different industries. We don't wanna hire you directly into an industry from the start. We wanna give you some experiences. Now, as you pro progress, as you get to the senior associate level and higher, we try to focus your expertise so you have deep knowledge in an industry. But those first couple years, we, we feel it's so important to experience a variety of in industries to find out what you're really passionate about. We want people to be passionate about the work they're doing and what industries they're serving is, is part of that passion. Um, the, the other thing I want to talk about is our education and training. And when you join us, uh, my commitment to you is your experience with I Bailey, you're going to learn new skills, you're going to uh, develop some talents and keep growing personally and professionally. And whether you stay your whole career like I have or whether after a few years you leave, the, what I want everyone to take away is my experience at I Bailey, I learned and I grew from that experience. And it's, it's helped me throughout my career. Um, you know, we have some great formal training where we teach technical skills. And as you progress, we're also teaching personal skills or life skills. 
things that will help you continue to grow both professionally and personally. And the other aspect about training is really the on the job training. And again, that ties to our culture because going back to my experience and what continues today, when you join us, you're working with a team and that team is uh, trying to develop you and they will expend all effort to help you grow and develop, give you opportunities, give you those challenges to help you progress in your career. Um, you know, later on, uh, someone's gonna talk about like the exchange program we have, something I'm proud of where if you start with us as an auditor or tax person, you can apply to, um, to work in one of our specialty consulting areas, business valuations or tech consulting or data analytics or a whole host. And the whole point there again is we want people to have experiences to grow. And we also find out uh, every once in a while people do this exchange, they spend a few months in a different area and they decide, you know what, that's my passion. You know, our goal is to create opportunities for our people as we grow the firm, it's all it's it's to create opportunities for our people to grow and our people to advance. So that that's the idea of the whole exchange program. You know, the other thing is we do an annual reloc relocation survey, and the whole idea there is to provide opportunities. If you would like to relocate, if there's opportunities in a different location, it's up to you. We never make anyone um, transfer to a different location. But we find every year there's a number of people that want to uh, relocate to different offices. So again, try to focus on our people are first and foremost. So the why's, why have I stayed in the firm for 39 years? Well, uh, first of all, it would be the culture. Second of all, it would be the great clients we work with and working with those mid-market clients, the satisfaction you get from them because they appreciate the efforts that we're doing for them. And then finally, it's a place where you can grow and develop. You can really expand your career and get into different opportunities and, and, and different things within the firm. So I am passionate about the firm, obviously. And um, again, I wanna thank you for taking the time today to hear more about iBailey. And I hope in the future, you uh, consider joining the firm. We appreciate your time. All right, thanks Dave. Thank you for sharing a little bit about your background and, and the background of our culture and where that came from. Um, I think we'll be excited to hear from some of our staff next um, about what our culture is like today in our offices. Um, so that section is going to be led by our Chief Human Resources Officer, Lisa Fitzgerald. So Lisa, go ahead and take it away. Got it. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for taking time to join us today. Um, I'm obviously talking about a, a topic that I'm super passionate about, which is which is culture and, um, and benefits and how we integrate those things throughout the firm. Um, when I was thinking about culture and what culture means to me, the, the, honestly, the very first word that came to mind for me was everything. And I think how we, how we operate as a firm, how we interact with one another as a firm, policies we set, initiatives we start, all are really guided by these statements you see on the screen today. So we, we make our decisions as a firm using these kind of as our guiding principles, our values and our kind of our light um, to determine where we go as a firm. Um, flexibility is a, a piece of that, um, that statement, which is managing or maintaining balance between work and life. That's been really important to me as I raised children. Um, I, I needed that flexibility a, a ton, and that has been really, really helpful for me personally on my journey. I think the other thing I've worked, I'm old, so I've worked a few different places um, who said they had great culture, even had fancy things on the walls that talked about their culture. But I believe it's the first place that I really worked where I felt like we lived and breathed it and meant every single word of it. And I'm really, really proud to work at an organization, um, organization like this. 
one of the aspects, and Dave's touched on this, um, is kind of your development and career development as a whole. Um, we have a program called Career Development, um, and it's more than just the form that we fill out and the, you know, the conversations we have, but we're trying to encompass really how we work, how you develop through your whole journey with the firm. Um, but someone that can give you a, a really good um, example and firsthand experience of that is Sean from our team. So Sean's going to kick off and tell, thanks Sean, Sean's going to talk a little bit about career development and his experience with career development within I'd Bailey. Um, yeah, so I guess to introduce myself, uh, I'm Sean, I'm out of the Las Vegas office, uh, soon to be Salt Lake office, uh, you know, Dave, briefly mentioned you know staff being able to relocate without much of an issue and so far the process is going well um but as far as my career at the firm so far i got started in may of 2018 coming from a smaller firm that did primarily sec audits for microcap companies and you know coming into a bigger firm the expectations were were so much different um, and to be honest, they were a little overwhelming, but the, the team I had in the Las Vegas office, you know, they, I think what surprised me actually was that how much they cared to see me transition into the Las Vegas office and to be sure it was a smooth transition. Um, there was a period of time where I did struggle just because the learning curve was so great. There were bigger clients. There were different industries that I worked in that I never worked in in the past. And, um, you know, the partners, the managers in this office were really instrumental in helping me through that transition to be sure I understood I this audit methodology. And, you know, some of the other things that are more important to be successful in the office here. Um, I would think that the biggest, the biggest point for me is making my... Uh, in developing my, my career here and, you know, earning a promotion was just, you know, being able to talk to different career advisors. You know, we have a program here, as was mentioned earlier, where we have career advisors, but, you know, sometimes it may not work out with one career advisor, so you may just switch to another one. And, you know, the firm is really open to you as a staff making that switch. And for me, I think making that switch was was really important just so that I was able to have someone that I can communicate a little bit better with. And, you know, since then, since last year, when that switch was made, I, I think my career really has taken off. And, you know, another point that Dave made was just working with good people. I think that has also been significantly important, you know, having a great team that you have chemistry with, that you're able to talk to, not just about work, but with other things. You know, it makes, whether you're in audit or in tax, it just makes things so much easier. You're able to, you know, when you're busy, you're able to get through those engagements, get through those projects without feeling like it's the end of the world, without feeling like you're on your own. And so I think that, you know, as far as my development here goes, working with great people, you know, having the ability to speak with anyone about problems that I'm having as far as my, my development, as far as projects that I might be on, I think that's been instrumental to my development here. And, you know, as, as Dave mentioned, you know, the people in this firm, they, I think when some firms say we care about our, 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 our employees, it may not be as believable. It may not be as, uh, it's hard for people to believe, but I think here at this firm, with my experience personally, you know, I, I truly believe that the people here do care. And at the very least, they want you to succeed, whether it's within the firm or outside the firm. And, um, and yeah, that's just really a little bit about my career here and, you know, how the people here have really been instrumental for my development here. Awesome. Thank you very much, Sean, for sharing that. So like Sean mentioned, everyone, when you join us, you're assigned a career advisor. That person is the person that's responsible for moving you through your journey um, of development here with the firm. So thank you very, very much, Sean, for that. I really appreciate it. 
Um, another thing that's really important to the firm is giving back to our communities, um, the communities in which we serve. And so we do a lot of work in, in volunteering. So offices will go and volunteer as a group, um, which we think is really important. Um, but the other thing we do is we give people time off, volunteer time off to go and pursue their own passions. So what am I passionate about? And where do I want to spend my time? And the firm is really great about supporting us in those endeavors. So for example, junior achievement has been the thing I've done the last several years. So I get my time off um, to go into those classrooms and teach junior achievement. But that, that's what I'm passionate about right now. But to talk to you a little bit more about what she's passionate about is Lindsay. Thanks so much, Lisa. Um, I guess just to give a little bit of a background in, about myself, um, my name is Lindsay Phillips and I'm a, um, actually a new manager at, in the Minneapolis um, office. And I've been with the firm for about five years. Um, I went to the University of Minnesota, and something that I found really interesting there was that the, the programs, professors, and even some of the students were very heavily interested in a career at the Big Four. And I was looking for something really different, and I'd Bailey had this great selling point of the community service aspect of their culture. Um, and I found kind of over the last five years that this was not just a selling point. Um, so Lisa mentioned a little bit about the eight hours of paid volunteer time benefit. And this is something that I've also taken advantage of. Um, and I, I really love this benefit. Um, it really gives staff an opportunity to go out and actually like do something um, and set aside that time that you feel is important to work on something that you're passionate about. So last year I was able to volunteer um, across four different shifts at a local food truck. Um, and that food truck is run by a local Minneapolis nonprofit where um, they have a huge farm and urban growing space. And then the food that they grow is either sold at a city farm stand or it's turned into hot products which are sold at that food truck. So the flexibility of the paid time um, off benefit allowed me to work at across four different shifts, which allowed me to work with consistent um, local youth that were employed by the food truck and create those relationships with them, um, as well as building relationships with the organization um, and truly getting to do something that I was really passionate in and found interesting. I don't know how many um, accountants can say that they've worked at a food truck. So I thought that was a great opportunity. Um, really quickly, I just want to talk about our, each office sort of has their own community service committee um, and I've been a part of our Minneapolis one and this year we have kind of switched a little bit and highlighted a um, charity a month um, which has given us opportunity to highlight a lot of different charities in our community and then we've had di different drives or campaigns each of those months to benefit those charities um, and with the support of the partners and the staff from across the firm um, we've really been able to make a difference for a variety of those charities across the year. Um, last month, for example, we hosted a book drive for BIPOC um, authors or topic books to donate to our um, little free libraries. I don't, I think that's pretty nationwide. Um, those libraries to kind of bring those topics um, to different groups of people that may not be um, may not get the chance to see those books. Um, so with that, I guess um, those were kind of my highlight stories of the community service that I've been able to do through the support that I'd Bailey provides on the benefits that we have. Um, and I truly believe that we need to give back to our community to be an effective partner in our community. Um, and I'd Bailey feels that as well and that we um, find it important to have staff that are personally and professionally focused on service. Awesome, Lindsay, thank you. Thanks for all you do. Um, you know, like I said, it's, it's embedded. And even when our, like my HR team, the function comes together um, and, and gets together uh, once a time a year, we always embed kind of a service or a giving portion of, um, of that time together. So it, it's, it really is embedded in, in how, we, um, how we serve. Um, another uh, really key component of our culture is innovation, and we feel like we've really taken innovation kind of to the next level over the last few years. 
Um, we talk about it as teams. Uh, the HR function just uh, has is using a bot for the first time. We're super excited about that. We think we're really, really cool and innovative because we're using a bot to automate some processes of things that we're not fun tasks and that really where we wanted to spend our time. So, but here to give you a more firm wide picture of innovation is Ross Manson. Hello everyone and uh, really glad to uh, be with you here today and glad you're joining us to learn about uh, Ide Bailey. Um, <clears throat> I've been asked to uh, talk to you about innovation within Ide Bailey. And as you can see, we have uh, a component of that in our culture statement, which I think is actually rather unique to hear and see an accounting firm talk about being innovative and creative. And um, you know, why do we need to be innovative and creative? And what we would tell you, what we've been discussing on a firm-wide basis is it's to remain relevant. And you know, so how do you take a 103-year-old firm and you know, innovate, create, and to remain relevant? And that's really the, the challenge that we've been uh, focusing in on in the past three years and making some great strides. And just gonna highlight a few different activities of what we have done that you know, isn't just top-down innovation, it's really top-down, bottom-up, and all um, going in all different directions. And so a couple of items that I wanna um, you know, touch base with you on is we have an innovation council and because we don't, you know, we don't see innovation being a single person that drives innovation for everybody. And so we brought together this group of people that is across the firm, across geographies, across services, that really helps push the big ideas forward that we want to accomplish uh, from an Ide Bailey firm perspective. In addition to that, we also have another feature that we have, it's called Idea Hub. And Idea Hub is where anybody can put out an idea that they think is a benefit, um, it could be a benefit, but it could be something process related where we can get better at and then there's thumbs up and thumbs down to vote up in, uh, that idea. And once it gets to a, across a certain threshold, then there's action that has to be taken by a service area leader. It could be an industry leader on the innovation council or somebody even on the management team as well too. So as you can see, there's different mechanisms for idea generation and creativity to be happening within our firm. In addition to that, you know, Dave mentioned at the beginning, he talked about something that he's proud of in the EB exchange that has been um, you know, great, uh, greatly received across our organization. Um, one thing that I'm very proud of of what we've done is we've created innovation teams. In the past two years, we've had 11 innovation teams that again are pulling in talent, younger talent than just saying, hey, let's have, take our leaders and drive innovation. Utilizing this younger talent across the organization, across services, and again, across industries, that is taking big ideas and pushing them forward. And we've got four that are going right now. One of them is about audit methodology and how we're um, utilizing technologies into our audit practice. Another one is our intranet digital transformation, how I Bailey is deliver, uh, working in, uh, collaboratively internally. We have a professional services automation innovation team. And then we also have a digital self-service knowledge team that is out there uh, working on futuristic opportunities to engage, especially as we're coming through is um, really relevant in, in this post-COVID environment, how people are searching for answers and in that digital self-service arena. The, the other one that I wanted to mention is um, something that we've had great success with is um, this concept called a hackathon. And many, maybe many of you have heard of that. It's been um, widely used within the technology industry, but it's an approach that we applied um, at I Bailey. And um, you know, really it's more of a sprint. So I talked about the innovation teams, they're taking bigger projects that are take a longer time to research and develop and put together a roadmap of how we wanna implement that. Our hackathons are again, bringing a cross uh, service a group of people together and sending them down in a 48 hour time period and say, hey, here's a business problem. Instead of trying to solve this over six months with multiple meetings, we're gonna give you 48 hours. We bring them together and we let them go and we let them solve and we surround them with the resources that they need, um, which can be, you know, uh, myself going and get pizza for them late into the evening as they're moving forward with continuing to progress, um, but also, you know, IT resources and such. And so it's, it, it's um, you know, some things that, some steps that we've taken in the past few years. And again, it gets back to how do you change that, um, how do you change that perspective in that 103 year old firm to be innovative? And again, it comes back to relevance and 
you know, very excited about our digital transformation that we're working on, which has a significant component to um, our innovation frontier. Um, you know, we talk about digital literacy within our organization and, um, you know, finally how that all leads to change. And I think that through these processes, it's really helped us talk about change within our organization and adapting to change differently than we have in the past. And so at some point in, uh, in the future, I hope to be engaged with yourself and utilizing, um, you know, people through hackathons and uh, such as yourself and innovation teams. And we will continue to push forward and, uh, and remain relevant from an accounting firm perspective. So I appreciate the time to talk about our journey and um, I'll turn it back to Lisa. Thanks Ross, very, very much. You've done some great, great work in this innovation space and I can say um, from firsthand experience that some really phenomenal ideas have come through certainly those those councils and those groups um, but also through that through idea hub and a lot of things that we've looked at and implemented from an hr perspective as well so thank you very much for that one of the other areas i think i mentioned early on was was really important to me and the reason I've stayed at the firm for 13 years is this this is work life balance. So um, I I have children that are teenagers now, but when I started with the firm 13 years ago, they were little and uh, had lots of needs, and uh, so it was really really helpful to be able to try to balance that. Um, and even um, you know at now as those children don't need me as much, um, but uh, um, just being able to pursue things that I'm passionate about or help out with my parents or various things. So um, this is something that um, the firm doesn't just say we do. And to talk more about that is Trina. Thank you, Lisa. <clears throat> I'm excited to be here to talk with all of you today. When I started my career and when I was in college, this was in the early 2000s where remote working really wasn't something um, that you could do or that many companies hadn't embraced it. And I really felt that I was torn between this place of I needed to either be career focused or I could be family focused. And as much as I had kind of had that pull, I decided that I was going to write a vision statement for my life and that I was bound and determined that I was going to find some place where I could have a fulfilling career while keeping up my obligations that I knew at the level that I wanted to be at for my family. And so seven and a half years ago, I found I'd Bailey. And in those seven and a half years, I have had a baby, the passing of my father, and I've gone through a big life transition of getting divorced, right? So three major life events in that seven and a half year period. And through each of those times, I've been able to work with I'd Bailey together to come up with a way to allow that type of flexibility where I could be at my best place and my whole self at my work environment and be there for my family. You know, one story that I like to talk about is I, as my father was passing away, I was able to be at his bedside and, and do my work because as people are sick, they're oftentimes sleeping, right? And those are moments that you can have in your life and still have a successful career. During this time, I also got promoted from manager to senior manager, and it's just been such a blessing. Hyde Bailey's also been really supportive, as Lisa was talking about, about various passions. So I love talking about gratitude, and I love those speaking engagements, and I'm able to work those into my workday, um, being involved in the community to help spread some of that knowledge. One story uh, that I like to also talk about is uh, somebody asked me, I was picking my daughter up from school and there was a poetry picnic that was happening and in the hallway somebody asked, hey Trina, are you coming to the poetry picnic? And my daughter like scoffed at them like, of course she's going to the picnic in the middle of the day because she works at I Bailey. And so it's these pieces of life that you are able to, you know, take and put um, together. It's sort of like this puzzle. I like to say that um, at I'd Bailey, you're sort of able to be like a butterfly. Some days I'm working at a coffee shop in the morning, I'm in the office, I'm picking up my kids, I'm just doing all of this fluidity. I think another thing, you know, about work-life balance is that sometimes we have this perception that it's a teeter-totter. And it's really not that. Think of it more like Lego pieces, right? One day I may have a lot of Lego pieces that are going to be in my work bucket. 
And another day, I may have more Lego pieces that are in my family bucket. It's about having fluidity and working with Ide Bailey. After I had my second child, I had been traveling quite a bit um, for my position. So I'm actually not an accountant. Um, I work in our technology consulting practice. And I talked to my boss and I said, you know, the travel, I'm happy to do the travel. I love the client work. Can I switch to four days a week for a period of time? And for two years, I did that. And that's what I needed in life, right? That's what I love about Ide Bailey is that there's a fluidity to it of meeting you where you are in your life and working and performing at that level. So I just, I can't even say enough about how much I have been so grateful that I look back at what I had for a vision of my career and my life and that that has come to fruition here at Ide Bailey. Ide Bailey fully understands that by having happy, stable employees, that it provides the value to the client and actually drives us to have better clients because we're able to serve them from a lot of energy because we're fulfilled in all of those areas of life. So I am super excited that you guys are taking a look at Ide Bailey. Uh, feel free to reach out to me. You have my name, I'm on LinkedIn and just, it's such a great place to work. Thank you, Trina. Thank you so much. So reminded me, I, I actually took a Zoom meeting from my car two days ago trying to pick up my son from an activity. So COVID's put some wrench in the in our in plans, but um, we've been able to be so, so flexible with our staff and managing that balance and running a child to a workout, for example. So thank you. Thank you, Trina, very much. Thank Appreciate you, Lisa. It. Um, we build fun into everything. This is I wouldn't have been here for 13 years if I didn't think this was the most fun, rewarding, challenging, awesome place to be. Um, but we really do have a lot of fun. Sometimes I think, do we have more fun than we should? But <laughs> Stanley's going to tell you we don't. So here to talk to you a little bit about fun and I Bailey is Stanley. Thank you, Lisa. Um, so my name is Stanley Lamb. I am an audit associate with the Rancho Cucamonga office. Uh, those of you that don't know Rancho Cucamonga, it's in Southern California in a little place called Inland Empire. Um, as Lisa mentioned, we do have a lot of fun here and also kind of alluding to what Trina mentioned, um, you know, we recognize that happy people, you know, results in, you know, better um, client support as well as better work environment things like that. And I can say that from my own experience, um, outside of, you know, the normal support, we definitely try to have as much fun as we can in order to make sure that we are happy people. So we do have that kind of work hard, play hard kind of mentality here. Um, the partners, everybody that I've met, um, they're all amazing people that uh, really know how to have fun and really support us in that aspect. Um, I like to say that, you know, throughout all this time, we've had different kind of um, fun activities that we've done. Um, usually, and I know right now with COVID going on that we are not having it but we usually have out of town trainings um at the beginning of this year in january um i flew out to utah with a bunch of our staff um for the assurance one training and we got to to know each other not just the people within the southern california offices but everybody throughout the whole firm and we definitely all clicked um as dave mentioned like um there's a certain culture that we kind of uh, this family culture that we kind of share with one another and when I got there and I met everybody, not just you know within the Southern California office, but everybody else, I definitely felt at home. It definitely felt like everyone got along really well. We were able to click right away. Um, whether it be like when we went out, you know, checked out the town together, or even um, even amongst the Southern California offices, we did board games back at the hotel. So the out of town trainings were definitely very fun experiences. Um, other than that, um, there's even at my own office, we do a bunch of different little things like um, around Christmas time, we did Christmas caroling. Uh, we have a holiday party where we all brought a lot of food together. Uh, we had a, a Southern California holiday party where we all got together, uh, played games, bowling, um, you know, 
just have fun with each other in general. Uh, we also have done a hockey game. So our Rancho Cucamonga office, our California office, we, um, we support the Ontario Reigns, which is the development league for uh, the LA Kings. So we came, went out to one of their hockey games and I was a lucky draw, but I ended up riding the Zamboni. I participated in the halftime games. Um, it was a lot of fun for sure. And then, you know, even now during COVID, um, we are not able to see each other anymore, but we still do a lot of things. We have, um, you know, after our happy hours that where we just kind of get together and talk. Uh, we have trivia nights. Um, for sure, I, you know, the people here made it fun. And that's the thing, like we've kept it consistent throughout that no matter, you know, what kind of situation we're in, we're able to have that fun with each other and we're able to connect and really kind of build that family environment. So, you know, as a firm, I definitely feel that, you know, we, we do work hard and we definitely play hard here. Thank you so much, Stanley. Yes, I think um, offices do different things, uh, some during, busy seasons um, for the Fargo office where I reside has a, a 10 key challenge, which is loads of fun. And there's a golden 10 key you get when you, <laughs> when you, if you win that, uh, but offices um, do a really nice job of keeping people engaged and scheduling time to do fun things together. So thank you all for, for participating today. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa, for leading that section. Thank you, everybody, for sharing your experiences. Amy, if you want to go ahead and kick off our next poll. Sure. So if you were able to join the first time, go ahead, open up another internet browser, or you can open it up on your um, smartphone or tablet, and you're going to go to poll.ev or excuse me, pollev.com slash I2, so E-I-D-E-2, and let us know what you think the most valuable part of our culture statement would be to you. <laughs> lots and lots of work-life balance, perfect. So as you could see with all of those presenters earlier, we definitely provide that work-life balance and it's something to be proud of because we all need it, especially during this COVID time. Yes, I would say that is probably my favorite piece too. Um, but I think they're all really valuable pieces. Um, and it really just depends on what sort of situation you're in, which is why we offer so many great benefits that support our culture so that there's really something for everyone. Amy, are we ready for the next piece? We are. We will leave that open in case you guys want to keep answering. And we will turn this over to our next presenter. Awesome. Paul, Shannon, Nicole, you guys are up. Okay, thank you, appreciate that. Um, we'll, I'll go ahead and introduce myself and let Shannon and uh, Nicole introduce themselves when we get to that point. Uh, it's an interesting transition as we move from talking about our culture statement to our, uh, our um, Inclusion and Diversity Council and, and the efforts that we've made there one of the things that came up for us was as, as we started to flesh this out and, and Nicole and Shannon will both talk a little bit more about the history of this and, and the traction and the efforts that we've made. Uh, so I hope I don't steal their thunder a little bit, but as we got into this a ways, there was a lot of question about whether we needed to change our culture statement or if, it, if our culture statement captured that. And as I look at our culture statement, the first two lines of this really drive home how important to us as a firm uh, the being inclusive and having a diverse workforce really is. As you look at that caring for our external and internal clients with a passion to go the extra mile and respecting our peers and their individual contributions, we feel really captures why this is so important to us. And as we, we look at that and how we define that, um, you, there, and Amy, you can go ahead and advance that. Um, you know, our definition of diversity, and there are a lot of ways to do this, is that we divide, define diversity as a variety of thoughts, abilities, experiences, and backgrounds, and inclusion is embracing these. 
and, um, and creating a culture where everyone feels safe and important and valued. Um, like I alluded to, Nicole will give us a history of one of our areas where we feel as a firm that we've, we've had great success that we can leverage off of that, and that's our first focus. Um, but as, uh, and that, that relates to our initiative to eliminate barriers for women to, um, to become partners within our firm. Um, and as, as we've started to figure out what diversity is and what, how we can be more inclusive, there, there are certain elements of inclusion and diversity that are very obvious, uh, or most of the times obvious. Uh, you, you look at race and gender and there are certain ethnicities, age group, physical attributes, all of those things become very obvious. But as this slide alludes to, that's the tip of the iceberg. And as you dig a little deeper, um, as we've tried to do, as we digest how complex diversity really is, you see that there is so much below the water and, and so many unseen attributes that that it would be hard to say, well, this week we're gonna take on religious tolerance or um, recreational habits or um, smoker, non-smoker things. And so our, our idea as a council has been to create a cultural shift of being inclusive of all. Um, and so, if, uh, Nicole, if you wouldn't mind kind of talking us through the the first focus and, and kind of where we began with our, our story. Sure, thank you so much, Paul. And yes, hi, I'm Nicole Grubb. I am a HR manager or over, and I oversee our HR programs here at iBailey and I've actually been here for almost 18 years. So I've been here and I've seen a lot um, of growth in this area over the years that I've been. And one of the things that we thought to help us all understand kind of our inclusion and diversity story is we'd like to share with you all where we began kind of over 10 years ago. And as Paul said to our first focus initiative, which is also kind of known as our women's initiative. And so to help you kind of understand where, we, where we've been is we wanted to share on the slide here, you'll see our vision and mission statement. And again, like Paul said, you'll hear kind of um, that we constantly are kind of talking about this, but how these definitely go back to our culture statement and also the purpose of our inclusion and diversity initiative. First focus started, like I said, 10 years ago. And part of this is how we really feel is kind of that overall umbrella of our inclusion and diversity program, which is to seek to build a workforce that is reflective of the communities in which we serve and lets our people be their true authentic selves. That's why we think it's so important that it exists. So now we thought we'd share a little bit of our history of first focus to kind of help you understand the beginning of our story here on our IND kind of journey. 12 years ago in 2008, we began our first focus initiative. This was kind of our first initiative that we began in this space. And so we had an initial task force was created and there they created our mission and vision statement that we just shared with you all. Then the following year, at our annual partner meeting, we kicked off this initiative and we had a presentation on gender differences to all of our partners, which was then followed kind of by a firm-wide communication campaign talking about these differences, really got the dialogue going along with our partners, with our staff on kind of what those gender differences look like. Then in 2010, we trained our first, first focus facilitators. And you might be asking what that is. Well, those are facilitators. They're a group of women who are in manager or senior manager positions at our firm. And what they do is they lead guided conversations with our participants. And so we call these kind of, you're gonna see on here too, a focus forum. So that's kind of where all of that guided dialogue and conversations happen. And here at these events is where you can learn from others, especially your peers, on topics that encourage empowerment and increase self-awareness. And probably the most important thing here, too, is since we started these in 2010, we've had over 50 women facilitators across our firm and over 1,000 participants. So it's just such, been such a great initiative to watch us kind of grow in our women's initiative here at iDaily. Then in 2013, you'll see that we started a formal women's leadership boot camp that happened once a year. 
And in addition, our story was shared as a case study in the Journal of Accountancy. So we started to kind of get some national recognition for our program. And most recently, and something that we are so proud of here at iBailey, is we have been, for the past two years, we've been named to the best CPA firms for women's list by, a, by the Accounting Move Project. You might be wondering what that Accounting Move Project is, and it's actually the only annual benchmark that celebrates excellence in women at accounting and advisory forms. So we go through an entire process, kind of an application process, and just are very proud that we've been recognized with our first focus in women's initiative the last two years. Actually, since we started um, kind of submitting our application for them. So it's been a really fun journey to kind of see where we're going. Amy, I'll have you go to the next slide, please. So you might be wondering kind of now is, where are you today? What did this do? Where are we going? So this slide kind of shares with you the numbers, which we feel are kind of a, a big part, not the entire part of our story. But for women in 2008, when we began, senior managers were only 21% female and 19% of our partners were female. And now when you look at where we are in 2020, we are just so like so proud to show that we have 44% female now at our senior manager level and 31% at our partner at our partner level. So we feel like this has been a huge part of that story in getting kind of that women's initiative going and we're just so excited to kind of see what the future holds. So I'd like to now introduce you to Shannon who will continue with more on our IND story. Um, hi everyone, I'm Shannon Lamon, and I have um, uh, uh, the partner in charge of the international tax group here at the firm. I'm based in Boulder, Colorado, and I've been in public accounting for 20 years. Um, I wasn't always with iBailey, and, and um, what I like to tell people about culture, especially, and um, I, so I'm, I'm glad that you're here and learning about our culture is that I really didn't feel like I was at home until I came to I Bailey. Um, and so I would just encourage you to really look at culture as um, one of the items that you scrutinize firms um, when you go and talk with them because it is so important. So 10 years after um, our first focus began, um, we decided to create an inclusion and diversity council. And so if you would go to the next slide, um, the reason why I, I like to share also the reason why we say inclusion and diversity rather than diversity and inclusion. Um, it seems like semantics, but um, uh, uh, Dave Stendi heard Steve Robbins speak at a keynote um, around inclusion and diversity. And the way that he explains it is that what would happen really if you have um, a diverse workforce but you don't have an inclusive environment. That would just be quite a disaster. So his quote um, is, without an environment that breathes inclusion, we take the breath out of diversity. Put differently, inclusion unleashes the power of diversity. And we truly believe that um, within our firm. And so our mission, our vision uh, for our council is to create a professional workplace where our people can be their full ex authentic selves and so our mission is to create an inclusive and diverse environment where we build a workforce that's reflective of the communities in which we serve. Because different people and different perspectives help us to provide innovative solutions for our clients, opportunities for our people, and success for the firm. And a little bit about our history. Um, like I said, we started um, the, the council um, in 2018, where we were just having discussions around expanding that initiative, the first focus initiative to really be more inclusive and focus on um, inclusion and diversity throughout the firm um, based upon all types of diversity and not um, just gender. So in at the end of 2018, the council was selected. And then in early 2019, we had our first meeting. Um, here we're just, you know, a little bit more than a year and a half in. And wow, there is a lot to do. So we developed our mission. Last year, we developed our mission, our vision, our pillars and action items. We informally announced um, the council to the to the partner group then. We also had uh, uh, Risha Grant do a keynote uh, uh, presentation about inclusion and diversity. If you haven't read her book, it's fantastic. 
Um, and then uh, early this year, we started with our firm-wide messaging. And we like to share also the key pillars of our mission because it shows, um, you know, really what we are going to be focused on over the coming months and the coming years to really uh, make sure that we have an inclusive environment. One, first of all, and it's super important that this is leadership driven. So Dave Stendy, our CEO, is in full support. He comes to all of our meetings. He provides great insight into what other firms are doing as well. And also our partners are fully vested in, invested in, um, in what we're trying to accomplish. Um, also education and training. We believe that really uh, going after making sure that people understand unintentional bias, understand inclusiveness and what that means um, would really help to uh, advance the firm in terms of our, our culture being inclusive and uh, as a result being more diverse. Also, we are focused on recruit, recruiting and retention efforts. So we are putting, um, our, we're in the process of developing what our recommendations are for changes to recruitment and also um, developing also programs similar to First Focus where we're trying to retain, retain um, a diverse uh, workforce as well. And then, of course, staff involvement. We really want to provide staff with the ability to to, to have input on what we're doing and to stay engaged and, and help move us forward. So our next steps really are, um, we're moving fast and furious to try to get as much done as we can. We just uh, had a firm-wide survey where we asked our people a number of different very pointed questions about our, inclus our inclusion and diversity within the firm. And then uh, in th this fall in October, we're going to have our first ever inclusion, inclusion and diversity forum, where we're going to be having um, Dr. Steve Robbins provide a keynote around his um, work in this area, and also just brainstorming, trying to get feedback in terms of what more we can be doing and sharing what we've already been doing. Also, we're going to be setting up employer resource groups. So that's uh, a key component where we're wanting to involve um, the staff. Um, that the, the goal of that is to really create community, continue dialogue, generate ideas, and help educate the firm around issues that are related to those employee resource groups. And that would be open to anyone who supports the interests. This is uh, the message from Dave. Um, you already heard from him, but our people are the heart of our firm. Our goal is to not just give them the tools to succeed in their careers, but also a place where they feel supported and understood on their journey. And finally, we're going to wrap up with uh, another poll question. And this is thinking back to that iceberg and the things that are under the water and what um, in invisible diversity traits were you most surprised about? All right, and as you put in your answers, we'll start seeing this word cloud expand. And the more you guys focus on one word, you will see them becoming bigger. So as you can see, first focus there. I know when I first saw this, there was quite a few that you knew it was there, it just didn't quite register. So it's always good to have a group like this just to help us all understand how everyone's thinking and to expand our knowledge and to keep the firm growing. So thank you, Shannon, and thank you, Paul. You guys can continue answering and I will hand this back over to Macy. Okay, thank you, Amy. Thank you, Paul, Shannon, and Nicole uh, for sharing about our Inclusion and Diversity Committee. Um, our final portion of our webinar today is going to be our panel of professionals. So if you haven't already, um, you can still submit questions through the Q&A or through the chat function. Um, we're getting quite a few good questions. I don't know if we'll get to all of them. Uh, but if your question isn't answered, um, we are going to follow up with you after um, the webinar. So keep an eye out for that. 
But let's go ahead and meet our panelists. So Nina, if you want to start and just do a quick introduction, uh, who you are and, and your position at the firm. All right, well, hello everyone. My name is Nina Hindi and I'm an audit associate in our Reno, Nevada office. I started as an intern while I was finishing my last semester of undergrad at the University of Nevada. And then I transitioned into an audit associate role um, about six months after my internship enter ended. And I've been able to work in a variety of industries from governmental to nonprofit and commercial practices. Awesome, thank you. Shiloh, do you wanna go ahead and introduce yourself next? Sure, um, good afternoon everybody. My name is Shiloh Grosby. I'm an audit partner and I'm also um, now officially a, a board member and I work in Southern California in the Ranch Cucamonga office. So just really quick about me, and, and, and I will say that um, my story is a lot similar to today's Sendies. I've actually been um, in public accounting for 20 years. I, I started right out of college, like many of you will, and um, I started with a firm that eventually merged into iDaily. So essentially, I've been with the same firm my entire career so far. Um, I think the one thing I just would want to let you all know as you start your journey is, is really, you know, you're not expected to know where you're gonna end up um, for your entire career, but I never thought that either, just like Dave said, I never thought I was gonna be a CPA in a public accounting firm for, for my entire career, and, but I have been. And, and not only that, um, you know, I'm a, I'm a partner now and, and, and also a board member in the firm. And one of the main reasons that I've been here as long as I have and continue to stay really does come down to the people and the culture. And um, you've heard that quite a bit today in, in um, the themes of, of different folks speaking. And, and when Trina was speaking, she really resonated with me as well. And I had actually chills going up my, my arms when she spoke because, because my story was also very similar to hers. Um, you know, there's a lot of doubt out there, especially when, with women that whether or not you can actually do this and, and whether or not you can take it all the way. Uh, so hopefully you are able to see today uh, by people such as Trina and myself that, you know, if it's something that you really want, you, you can do it. Um, the career is very rewarding. There's, there's definitely work that you put in, but uh, there's also all the opportunity um, there for you. So I hope that you guys can walk away with that today and find yourselves in a place that fits for you. So I'm happy to be here. Awesome. Thank you, Shiloh. Thank you for being here. Um, Adam, you want to go ahead and introduce yourself next? Yeah, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm Adam Webb. I'm a senior manager on the audit side in our Denver office. Um, I, when I graduated from school, I started my career at um, Big Four at Deloitte in Denver, Colorado. Uh, did that for one year um, and then was lucky enough to move over to it was, well, Gordon Hughes and Banks um, for two weeks before we merged in with Ide Bailey. And I would say that was probably one of the best things that happened with my career. Because um, as, as multiple people have said, um, you know, sometimes we have to work longer hours, but even just every day, an eight hour day, you're spending with people at work and you know, if you enjoy the people you work with, um, that's what keeps me here and, uh, and um, going every day. So I, uh, as far as audit wise, I have focused in uh, 401ks, the SEC practice. Um, I'm on our, the firm's manufacturing and distribution committee and do kind of random audits uh, in, across all industries. So. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Adam. And Catherine, you want to go ahead and introduce yourself as well. Thanks. Um, I'm Kat March. I'm in the Sioux Falls office now. I worked remotely uh, before remote got worldwide. Um, I started in the Denver office, actually, though I've been here about five years. And um, husband got a job, had to move. I'd barely supported me in that move. And I started working remotely um, out of South Dakota. And then after my move to South Dakota, I started to really notice um, pain points and things that were similar across clients of 
similar size and wonder uh, if there's a better way that I could serve them. I just was feeling kind of helpless and advising on those types of pain points from my role as an auditor and felt like there's more I'd Bailey could offer, but I didn't understand it enough. Um, so I was encouraged and applied for the exchange program, which is, as Dave mentioned earlier, kind of our internal internship opportunity that you can jump from one service offering to another um, and just experience other opportunities within the firm. And that within that that exchange program, I experienced honestly just an astonishing level of investment into me, not only as an employee, but really as an individual. Um, financial, training, time, certifications, the type of transferable skills and investments into me that I, I get to keep now. I'm, I could take it on down the road if I wanted, but I don't. <laughs> and it's just a, a opportunity to, without any fear, try out something new in your career and see if it aligns a little better with you. Um, so also with the exchange program, I found even more mentors. I had incredible mentors on the audit side of things. And then I found new mentors over in technology consulting. Um, and they were able to offer just different insights, a different perspective because they had a different career path. And they were so generous with that mentorship and um, advice and just, just perspective on different routes that your career can take. So after six months with the exchange program, I just kind of felt that this was something that got me up in the morning. That's something that was a little bit more aligned with me and my skill set even than auditing was, even though I loved it. And so I got to make a fairly significant career pivot from public accounting to technology consulting. And I got to do that without any of the fear or the, the stress or the heartache that I think a lot of people have to go through when they're considering a career change. Um, I didn't have to do the applications at other places or the difficult conversations with those mentors that I loved or lose the people that I enjoyed hanging out with at the firm that were my work friends. I didn't have to lose any of that. I got to make a career shift in just an environment of, of support and sincere encouragement and mentorship. And that is something I'll always be grateful for. I was already grateful for the, to the firm for their help in me moving and being able to work remotely. And then I got this whole other level of investment into me as an individual that um, has really changed, you know, affected my life. And it's kind of fun to see the culture statement come full circle from when I was at career fairs, just seeing it in a pamphlet to how it can really, really affect your life. I think Macy mentioned it earlier. This is something you should really think about when you're looking at places of work because it does affect how your life turns out. Awesome. Thank you, Catherine. I always love hearing about your exchange program. I love, or your experience. I love the exchange. So um, Me too. Listen to you talk about that forever. Um, but we have a lot of questions, um, so we're just going to hop into those. I think one thing that keeps getting brought up um, is obviously um, we are all working remotely right now, or for the most part, our firm is working remotely. So um, one of the questions was, how is I Bailey adapting to remote work in response to COVID nineteen and what does that look like for the future of I Bailey, maybe in a post-COVID world? Um, I don't know if anybody feels really strongly and wants to start. Uh, I'll be happy to. I mean, unless uh, somebody else wants to jump in here, feel free to, to take over. Um, you know, I work in the assurance side of things. And, and, and so what I would say is, you know, pre-COVID, things were, were definitely, there, was a, there is always a little bit of structure um, but that structure is also, it, there's autonomy as well. So there's, there's a balance there. The structure is the sense of you have a schedule, you have jobs, you have assignments and things that you're going to do, but the completion of that work is really uh, in your hands in terms of, uh, you know, you, you, you've got the responsibility to get that work done and um, you have managers and senior associates that will assist you through that process. And, and ultimately, it is your your job to get that done. In the in the COVID world, that a lot of that still remains the same. However, instead of being in a, a location together where you're working together, where you've traveled, where where maybe you were at a client and uh, you had that you know really um, structured set of where I check in every day, you're you're now working remotely in a lot of cases. So. Probably a bit more of that autonomy exists in the COVID world, 
you still have access to all those resources that you need in order to answer your questions. You still have managers and the senior associates who are overseeing uh, your work and, and helping you through your tasks. However, where is that all taking us post COVID? I think the biggest takeaway, at least from an assurance standpoint, anybody else want, who wants to chime in with respect to maybe how it impacts um, some of the other areas, feel free. But from an assurance standpoint, what we're realizing is there's so much of the work that, that we are doing remotely that we could have always been doing remotely. And we absolutely anticipate seeing some changes in how we move forward post COVID. Client relationships still need to be maintained. We definitely still need to see our clients, go visit our clients. But maybe the way that looks on a day-to-day -day traveling perspective changes a little bit. You know, not on the, out on the roads, not constantly um, back and forth, or maybe you're not even spending as many nights out of town as you would have previously because we can do so much remotely. And we're proving to our clients that we can do it remotely and maintain that relationship with them. And so I think we'll see a lot more of that post-COVID uh, as we start to adapt to how technology helps us uh, continue to be efficient in our, in our world. So more autonomy probably. Okay, great. Does anybody else have anything they want to add? Okay, awesome. Next question. Um, kind of off of that, we've gotten a couple of questions about um, audit. We've got a lot of auditors on the panel. So um, people are wondering about um, travel in audit. Obviously, Shyla, like you just said, we're working remotely right now. But pr prior to COVID, um, what sort of travel requirements are there when, it, when you're an auditor? Anyone else want to take that one? <laughs> okay. If not, I'm happy to. You go for it. Okay. Um, well, you know, and we touched on it a little bit, so I won't, I won't drag it out too much. But, uh, you know, generally speaking, the, the travel is whether you're day-to-day -day traveling to a client, uh, that's one form of travel. And that, depending on where you live and depending on what state you work in, I'm in California, so probably not the best example because sometimes our travel can be two hours in the morning, two hours in the afternoon, and you spend quite a bit of your day on the road. Not all states and locations are that way. There's also overnight travel, and so that's something to be expected as well. Oftentimes, you have to travel overnight to visit clients, and maybe you'll be out of town for a few nights um, at a time. And so, you know, we do a lot of things where we try to minimize travel in the sense of carpooling when you can, so that way you can alleviate some of the traffic. Once again, California, so maybe our, our situation is different than others, but I do think COVID is going to change this a little bit. I definitely can see that we're moving more towards, you know, instead of being on the road or traveling five days a week to a client, well, maybe you only need to go to the client two or three days because you can do the rest of it from the office. So we'll see how that evolves, but you know, travel is definitely part of the job. Okay, awesome. I wanna switch gears a little bit here. Um, Adam, you had mentioned that you started your career at Deloitte. Um, so I'm curious, what are some of the differences that you've noticed coming from a big four and going to um, a regional size firm? Yeah, um, there are kind of two big differences that stand out or jump right to my mind. The first one is the client base is obviously completely different. Um, you know, you, you can be working on, my experience was large SEC companies with Deloitte. Um, it was busy season hours were a lot different. I think I was leaving my house at 6 a.m. in the morning during busy season and getting home at uh, 11 to midnight for two and a half straight months. Um, so it wasn't quite the work-life balance that you would hope for. Um, as far as the other item, and I think this is the one that is, is more important to me, is that, um, and it goes back to the client base, is you're on jobs at Big Four for such a long period of time, you get to know that one engagement team 
really well. So I was, I knew the six other people out of the 400 people in the Denver office. Um, but my first day at I Bailey, I met essentially the entire audit department in Colorado. And um, it was really inclusive. I got to know a lot of people in that first week. I think I, I knew all the tax people. I don't think I met a single tax person at Deloitte. So, um, and, you know, fast forward 12 years, I'd say some of my best friends are who I work with. We go and hang out um, after work, um, do happy hours. We go golfing all the time. So I would say, um, those are the kind of key differences that have always stuck with me between the two. So. Awesome. And I don't think anybody else has experience at another firm. So I don't think anybody else, no, everybody's shaking their heads. Okay. Awesome. Um, okay. A couple other things. Let's see here. Um, Nina or Catherine, I think this next question will probably apply to one of you. Um, but what are consulting opportunities like when you first start your career at I Bailey and Shiloh and Adam, you might have some stuff to add from maybe um, the upper management perspective as far as um, assigning roles and jobs. But Catherine or Nina, do you have any insight? Sure. So I think it's important that everybody in any role start to approach things with a consultative mindset, but it is difficult when you're straight out of college um, because you don't have that contextual understanding of um, how businesses do business and how um, revenue gets from point A to point B or how manufacturing works necessarily. And um, so, so it takes those years, like Dave was talking about, of just experiencing a few different types of, a lot of different types of industries, but in public, you learn so fast and you, you gain that type of experience so quick, so quickly that you'll start to feel like you do have some advising that you can offer. Um, so whether it's just the way that they're running reports for you for an audit or um, something that they, they bring up during the benefit plan audit that they're having trouble with, with managing an HR situation, um, not managing like HR data, something like that, you can, you can provide advice that way. And then with Hyde Bailey, as you move up and you gain that experience and you can become somebody who's a trusted advisor, um, there's technology consulting of various different types of technology. Like I'm on NetSuite, which is an accounting software. There's other softwares, data analytics, there's other technology consulting opportunities. Um, but really any route you take with Hyde Bailey, you're gonna need to be a consultant in a lot of ways. Awesome. Nina, do you have anything to add to that? I would just say that consulting is something you have to learn as you go. And in a lot of my experiences, I've only been with the firm for a little over the year. And I follow the partners and the senior managers and managers into the office with clients all the time because I'm always wanting to learn how do they talk? How do they learn certain things about the client? How do they better help their business? And I think that's just the great part of public accounting is I can see all different partners do that in all different industries and it really contributes to my consulting knowledge. Great. Okay. Adam or Shiloh, anything you want to add to that? Nope. I think they covered it. Okay. Okay. Awesome. All right. Let's see a couple other questions we're getting in over here. Um, we're getting a lot of questions about um, hiring and how we find our candidates and things that we look for in candidates. Um, so for maybe Adam or Shiloh, um, you wanna talk about maybe some of the characteristics that you look for um, when hiring somebody that's an intern or maybe an entry level associate? Sure. And I actually will say that uh, I enjoy taking part in that process quite a bit. And you learn a lot about personalities and, and how to, you know, uh, identify those traits that are, that are really important to Ibele. And the one thing that I will say that really shines for me more than anything else is just your, your personality, your communication skills, your outgoingness. So the way I always look at it is this. 
if you've brought a resume and you've graduated from college and you've got all those technical skill sets on a piece of paper, that's fantastic. But what can you bring to the table in terms of your personality? There's the one thing that you're going to do more than anything else, and it was a little bit identified in the last Q&A, is you're going to need to learn how to talk to people. You're going to need to learn how to have conversations and be consultative. And, and those things are, are, are things we can't teach you in terms of just being polite and kind and energetic and outgoing. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll just chime in here too on this. I did see a couple questions in there as well that talked about, well, what types of experiences and things do you want to see on resumes? And from my own personal perspective, I can tell you that you know, I don't look for, did you have an accounting job? Did you have an internship somewhere? Did you, did you have that type of relevant experience? I, I think no matter what your experience is that you put on a resume, you need to be able to find how that experience correlates to what you need to do today. So an example would be, I was a food server all through high school and college, and that taught me so much about people skills. And in my interview, I was able to demonstrate my ability to talk and be outgoing and energetic and communicate. And, and that's how I was able to sell myself. I didn't have a county experience. So don't worry about that as much as your ability to sell yourself and have good communication skills and be outgoing. So important. That's what I need. Yep, I would 100% agree with that. It's not so much about, like we, you know, there's there's other factors. Like you could be a 4.0 student and that looks awesome and everything, but you could be lined up exactly the same as somebody that maybe has a 3-4 GPA, worked 40 hours a week, was involved in the community, um, you know, so I think we... We don't necessarily look at, did you do accounting stuff? It's more of a whole picture of, of what you did throughout college. And um, 100% agree that a lot of those times, like if it's not so much going on right now, it's a weird year, but you know, if people go and take you, a firm goes and takes you out for drinks or, or a meal or something, that is almost more important than the interview because they're looking for how do you hold a conversation? How do you interact? Do I want to work with this person for eight to 10 hours a day? So it's kind of those, those skills that um, I think we look at more than just what's on your resume. Yeah, I would echo. Oh, Nina, did you want to chime in? I just wanted to add, since I recently went through the whole hiring process and internship to associate, you do not need to know how to audit to get hired in audit. I Bailey will teach you how to audit, but they can't teach you how to have fun, how to communicate with people and be a team player. And I think that's crucial. And the best advice I can give you being a student in college is just network. Join Beta Alpha Psi, join business councils and just talk with people and learn how to build relationships because that's a skill that is just invaluable in accounting. Awesome, thank you. Um... As somebody who's a recruiter, um, I would echo everything that um, those three just said. Um, we're getting a ton of questions of specifically about resumes and the hiring process. Um, I just wanted to call out, we do have a little Instagram series coming up called Ask a Recruiter where we're gonna be answering all those kinds of questions. So check out our Instagram on Monday for our first video. You'll get all of those questions answered. Um, we are getting down to the last couple of minutes here, so I want to throw out one last question to our panel um, that I would, I would like to hear from everybody, but what is the best thing about working at I Bailey? Yeah, I'll, I'll take that one first, and I'll kind of correlate it back to one of the big differences is, uh, so at Deloitte, I was just a little staff person. I would go and uh, if I had a question, I asked my senior. And then if he didn't know the answer, he asked the manager. If he didn't know the answer, it went to the partner, right? Like I can, uh, it's a little bit different now with my title because the partner is what's ahead of me. But um, I mean, as a right into I Bailey, you could just walk into a partner's office and have a conversation with them. Um, you know, it's just 
everybody here treats people as people and um, they really care about uh, you, um, not only your work life, but your personal life. Um, I mean, there was one time I almost strayed from my daily. It was a long uh, potentially hiring process and like six months into the process, I, my, the partner knew the whole time what I was doing. And, you know, I'm just like, I'm over this. I, I got the call for the interview and I'm like, ah, I don't know. I don't really want to do this anymore. And the partner was like, just go do the interview. You don't want to regret it uh, three years down the road um, if that's the choice you, you wanted to make. And so they, can't, they just care about you as a person and what's best for you. Um, so that's my big takeaway from working at iBailey. So. Kind of going off of Adam's is just the mentorship, um, even if it's not significant things like Adam's story, but every day, the level of mentorship that I've gotten since I joined iBailey, since I was an intern, um, and I still get, even from the audit department, even though I'm not working with them every day, I know that I can lean on them, and I do lean on them frequently um, for you know, career advice, life advice, marriage advice, <laughs> all of it. Um, the mentorship at this firm, I think, is second to none. It's, it's what attracted me in the first place, and it's never let me down. Yeah, I mean, I, I can speak to the, the same thing that, that Adam had mentioned early on. I mean, when I was an associate, it was the same thing. It's, it's the open door policy. It's, so it, it comes down to the people you work with. That, that whole idea that everybody is, you know, treated with respect. And as a partner now, I have the same open door policy. Um, in fact, oftentimes I will just reach out to associates directly and just say, hey, I'm going to do this. I want to teach you guys something. And, and they, you know, they're a little bit weirded out at the fact that a partner is just going to engage them directly. <laughs> but I'm like, no, 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 I love this stuff. You guys, it's, it's okay. Let me just, let me share what I know with you. And, and so I, you know, I, I love that aspect of the job and it, it doesn't matter if I'm a partner and, and you're an associate or a senior, I, I love to share my knowledge. So from that standpoint, I, um, I, I that, that's big for me, but, but moving up and, and, and growing with the firm, what kept me here all along was the people. And that's the bottom line. It was the people. And just to echo that, the people, the mentorship. Um, I work in an office with partners. We have six female partners. And it's having role models and associates that are my best friends that are so fun to come and work with every single day. It, you don't come to work to audit usually. You come to work to be with the people at Ice Daily. And it is my favorite part of the firm. Awesome. Well, thank you, everybody. We appreciate you being on our panel today and sharing your experiences. I think we have one last poll question, and then we'll let everybody go for the day. All right, we do have one more. So let me get this pulled up here. All right. So thank you for attending with us. We would like to know what's the most valuable thing that you learned from this webinar. Go to pollev.com slash i2. Let us know what you think. Awesome. And as those answers are coming in, um, I just want to say thank you again to everybody for attending and spending some time with us today. Um, if you're interested in opportunities at Ide Bailey, all of our positions are posted on our website at idebailey.com slash careers. So you can check out all of our openings um, or feel free. Um, my name is up on the screen. You can connect with me on LinkedIn um, and, and I'd love to chat with you further about positions that you're interested in. I think that's all we have for today. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you guys. And we will ask that you to go ahead and take the survey that may pop up at the end of the webinar here. I've also put the link in the chat. So thank you guys. Thank you to all the presenters. It's been a great webinar. So thank you guys. Have a great day. Thanks, Amy. Thank you. Thank you.